Right then guys, Lambretta vlog time. Time for an update. This is a different uh, scooter. This is another Indian GP150 that I've bought. That's the one that I was working on before. I really got a lot done with it, to be honest. I got the thingies welded, the struts welded back on properly. And the guy had to go at sort of straightening it a bit. And what have you. So I was on with that. And then uh, a mate of mine, somebody we were working with, mentioned that he had one that he wanted to get rid of. So I bought this as well. So this is, like I say, another Indian GP. But it came with some pretty decent bits, like Italian headset top and bottom. These forks are really, really good. It's like they've been, you know, like they've had the the seams welded a bit better and stuff. They're a really decent set of forks by the looks. Um, all seems pretty straight and what have you from what I can tell. I uh, had a look underneath it as I was doing it and realised that the guy hadn't bothered to put any, I ain't going into hand actually, any of the rubber uh, washer things anywhere on it and it sort of needs them all around it. So I had to take it all apart and do that. Uh, the floor runner, rear runner things that came with it were not great condition. Um, they're up there out of the way. It sort of cut a big bit off the back, and I know that you you have to cut a bit off the back on this one to put uh, an expansion exhaust on a lot of the time. But he'd done a really bad job of it. And for some reason, it sort of cut some off that side as well, which were totally unnecessary and just sort of um, and, and helped matters at all. Just, what's going on outside? Sorry, there was loads of noise outside. It was someone putting the bins, <laughs> putting the bins back. Right. So, um, and it didn't come with a, a seat, uh, as I was going to go on to say. So I got this seat off somebody. It's not the best, to be honest, but it was really cheap. Uh, that incidentally didn't have a seat catch with it. So, um, I was going to order one, uh, a side locking seat catch. So I just looked at them online. I thought, well, while you know, I've got all the stuff to make one of them. So I actually made this one. As you can probably tell because of the appalling welding that's on it. But it's secure and it's on. I've done done my best. It works anyway, so tennis saved, uh, I guess. It, it was something to do. So uh, it came with a 200, 200 engine casing, which is up there. Um, which I'm not going to get down. It's all in good nick and all that. Add a little bit of welding around the... the I'll just show you it. It's got to be easier, hasn't it? Uh, it's had a little bit of a weld there on one of the studs, as you can see. But looking at it, it's uh, quite a decent job. A pretty decent job. And I took it to the local scooter shop down uh, down in the village where I live. And he says it looks fine. He uh, recommended just probably polishing that up a bit on the inside, on the transfer thing. Uh, but I don't really want to take too much off there because it's where all the strength is and it, it's already been welded and for the sake of that little bit of airflow it won't be too bad compared to it you know, blowing up again it's you'd rather that little bit of airflow you know was compromised anyway i'm not going to use that on this because like uh, i said it's a 150 anyway so i can put a 200 cylinder if i wanted to onto a small block which i'm going to come on now so what so I've decided to do is use this old, this is a LI, LI 150 Series 3 casing. Pretty good nick all the way around. It had one broken stud in one of these, but I managed to get that out. But this has actually been drilled and tapped to the next oversize on that one. So they must have stripped the threads on that cylinder stud there. So what you can do about that is, I mean, you could put a time cert thing in in a, you know, like a screwing thing that you can screw some else into. Alternatively, you can get a stepped cylinder stud. Uh, I ain't got one of them to hand. I ain't got a stepped one here, but a cylinder stud that's just sort of bigger at that end, obviously. Well, it says it sounds it's stepped, then comes in and just is the normal uh, diameter further out. But the best option, really, is to get that hole welded up and drill it and tap it to the correct size again, which is what I'm going to do with this. I'm not going to weld it because I can't possibly weld aluminium. Um, yeah, aluminium. Uh, or whatever this is made of. 
uh, as I can barely, as I've shown you, I can barely even weld <laughs> steel, really clean, bright stainless steel. Because I'm not a welder. I just taught myself that terrible bit of welding. But anyway. Alright, uh, so what I need to do is to get this welded, I need to get the bearings sort of out. They need to come out anyway. So I'd rather do that now. Just in case, I don't want to get that welded and pay someone to do that and drill it and tap it and get all that done. And then by some accident, manage to bust something here, you know, getting this bearing out. It might not come out and I might end up breaking something else. I'm, you know, I'm sincerely hoping that doesn't happen, but there's always a chance. So rather than do that first and then try and get these out and replace them, I'm going to make sure I can get these out before, uh, before taking it in for that. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to warm it up a bit just with the propane torch thing there warm it up a bit around it and then i'm just going to sort of drift it through with that big socket and just hit the center because there's not really anything else you can do to get this out unless you've got a proper extractor tool thing which I, i'm assuming they do but i've done this before and it's worked like this so this is what i'm going to do so uh, i'll stop the vid and start it again on some setup properly for this. So wish me luck for that. Right, give us a sec. <coughs> right then. So I suppose this is it. Set up pretty much. Got a couple of other drifty things out, just in case I need to knock it with them, but I, I think this is gonna do it. Got the gas, got an hammer, fire extinguisher, just in case. Let's, let's see what happens. Gas on. Right, so hopefully you can hear me over this. This just wants some gentle heat. We're not getting up to bloody red hot temperatures but you can't get it to red hot temperature all that'll happen is that'll the uh, m uh, the metal will just collapse it'll just give up so just a bit of heat around it really don't want to go over the top with this i'm going to try it in a second because i don't even know how long that bearing's been in there it might have been in for 20 years it might have been in for six months so let's give it a go Give it a tap. Right. I think that's moving straight away. Yeah, nice one. There you go, look. Drifting out nicely. A few more and she'll be there. That's it. There. Right, so simple. That's that out. That'll be obviously pretty warm, probably. Uh, not bad. So that's that. That's that one out. So happy with the way that all worked. Scott, if you look, there is a tiny chip on there, which were there before I started, by the way. I didn't just do that, but I'm assuming that's where somebody else is knocked it and managed to catch the end of it which is you could see would be easily done i was speaking to uh the guy down at scooter shop though but uh, sorry and he told me about on a, a mag housing actually removing the outer lip or some of it on the on the other bit on the mag housing that goes on in order to put the uh the oil seal in quicker rather than taking it out and taking the bearing out and putting it in i'm assuming is what we were referring to Anyway, that were a bit of a tangent. Right, what I'm going to do is, I think, to get that one out, that has to be knocked through from this side, because that's actually a stepped bearing there. It's got like a lip around it, this side, so you must knock that that way through there, obviously. You can see that it's wider. If you, sort of, if you didn't know, you could sort of tell that it's wider there than it is there. There's no way you can knock it that way without destroying the casing, so... What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to have a, have a minute and think I'm going to get this one out. I might take those studs out and then rest it 
possibly that way across on the vice or something so it's resting on the outer rather than resting on these studs because i think there might be a potential for them to push through um maybe so hopefully it'll go as well as that one i'll stop video for two minutes and give it a quarter looking at <laughs> and then just decide what i'm going to do so see you in a second right yeah i've decided that i am going to take these studs out and rest it on somewhere else so I just thought I'd show you how I'm getting these out, just in case anyone doesn't know. Um, in order to pull them out, you could probably get hold of them with some mole grips or something, but you're bound to obviously knacker up the little thread. So this is what they call the double nut method. This might sound a bit patronising to some of you because it's, it's fairly well obvious and it's one of the first things anyone ever taught me, but one of the first things you learn. I'm assuming some people don't know. And if you know, just ignore it. <laughs> right. Put one nut on, nice and far down, pretty much as far as it'll go. Put one on top of it. Hold on to the top one. Get it something like a little bit tightened on, but you don't want to be tightening that one up too much. What you want to do is tighten that one up underneath. Upwards, really, is, is what I like to do. So it's always the force you're putting on, it's going away from the thread. It's from the, you know, the thing. So you've got hold of one of them, tighten that one up underneath, and then you can often feel it. That just sort of gave way then. And then you can just sort of draw it all the way out like that. And there you go. So, and then you'll find that they're obviously bound together because you've just tightened them together. So just put one on there and one on there and undo them again. Right, on reflection... <laughs> I've decided that it was probably going to be the best option that I've got to uh, sort of leave them in and knock it out just like that. Uh, especially because I'm on my own. If I had two people, we could have somebody like holding it here whilst I stood there and not him, but it's only me. So I'm going to just go for it. So anyway, I've got the long bar thing on this. So what I'm going to do is warm it up from this side and from the inside. Turn it this way and knock it out like that <laughs> hopefully it's going to work so this is it that one came out fairly easily so i'm hoping this one isn't going to be a bloody nightmare so let's see right, here we go oh by the way i've taken the oil seal out first obviously because that'll just set on fire there's bound to be some smoke and that with the oil and that so you don't need that on fire as well right just do it. See what happens. So a bit of this side. Bit of the inside. A little bit of this and then I'm just going to go for it. Right. Come on. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's hope it goes. Right. Yes, beautiful. You can feel straight away that it's moving. You can actually see that it just shifted as well. So there we go. Beauty. So that's that. I'm going to show you this. Look, if you haven't seen one of these out before, it's probably going to be warm. That can feel a bit of heat off that. It's got this uh, big step in it, so it obviously had to come out this way. So, yeah, I guess I was just being overcautious, thinking that I might have bust them or something, but that came out nice and easily. I've done it before and it's been much, much harder, so pleased with that. Right, so that pretty much concludes that bit of how to get the bearings out. Um, so yeah, there you go. Right, sorry guys, the battery had gone on the thing and I didn't realise. Because um, I'd done a, a conclusion to the vid, I've just been trying to edit it and I've realised that there isn't one on. So I'm actually come down to film a, a thank you basically is what I wanted to put on there. Thank you for the comments and stuff on the last vid. Thanks for the support of everybody. 
uh, you know who you all are, so uh, cheers for that. So I'll leave it at that before the battery goes again. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.